yes. Wow. What a pleasant good afternoon. Yes, a little bit of snow is outside. And I am just here thanking God for ooh, the coolness. Hallelujah. Yes, I have a topic that a few friends have been asking me to discuss. Not that I am perfect in the avenue of it, but on the road walking towards it. And during a couple of my counseling on, you know, WhatsApp and other, other medias, a few friends have asked me to openly discuss this topic for them and to give my views openly that others can also learn and uh, the topic is um what are the gaps in relationship and another thing why has our marriage fail many have married more than one time so why has a marriage failed and now that you have married well, let me say remarry. What is it in it now that you can share with others? And in the gap situation, we have found a lot of barriers. And what are some of these things that we can do to teach younger folks? And one of my things is that the scripture tells us that the whole should teach the young. Don't know if I'm that old, but what I've learned and in, in a few studies that I've done so far, and I just want to pinpoint a few of these things. Many times we are in relationship, and I'm talking about ladies and gentlemen. Many times we are in a relationship, and the reason why our relationship doesn't work is because we have never gone into the relationship. We feel like we are in the relationship, but we are not inside of the relationship. And what do I mean on this? It takes two persons to build a relationship. And at times we come to a, one reach at a crossroad, the other reach there, but there's no bridge that is built to make this relationship work. And I'm gonna use a few illustration out of my former life. I won't go into the full details of it, but I will try the best I know how. I remember some years ago, not too far back I'm going, that I met a young man here in Switzerland, um, Zurich. Let me just precisely say Zurich. And we decided to go into a relationship it worked out on the part that I found myself in the relationship, ready to build the bridge. But my partner at the time did not show. At the first, it looks like he was in the relationship, but after a while, he never did anything at all. He was not in the relationship. It takes two to agree on anything and I realized that every three months this person would just let me just put it like that just disappear that mean the person was always having a, a return ticket to go back from whence he came at first it struck me suspicious but then I started to figure out the reasons in many of our relationships that we have, we base our relationship on past experiences. And it should not work. That should not be our case. Let me just put it directly like that. When you find a woman in your life, or when a man comes to you and wants a relationship, we have to remember two things. It's either you say yes or you say no. And like you will hear a lot of counselors or coaches over the time during Facebook 
you will hear people say that you need to find out a few things about the other partner. I'm going to make it neutral. Instead of saying, man, you know, just neutral. Because it, it's on two part I'm talking about. And you've got to make sure that you, you start to question both persons. Maybe it doesn't reach down to marriages. It's just a mutual relationship. But you still got to know how the household that that person is coming from. How it is. You got to know if children are involved. If there are children on the way. Or if you're ready to have a child for this person. Or you're ready to be a father in this relationship. Or you're going to be a dad that step up. What everybody's calling stepfathers. Or you're going to be a mom that is stepping up. If you're going to be a stepmother. We, there are two factors in all the time in this. You got to know what you are willing to bring in this relationship. Because a lot of times I realize our partners come into a relationship hoping that the man will come in with the money or the woman will come in with the money or somebody will have a car, somebody will have a house, somebody will have this and somebody will have that. And at the ending of the day, somebody is running and leaving because they were not sure in the first place if that was the kind of relationship that they wanted to be in. I'm saying this to a lot of my young people, and I know some ladies in my age and older than my age, they still don't know what a relationship is all about when you go into the man, the female, male compartment of relate relationship. Even in the gays and the lesbian relationship, they don't un we are just not understanding it. A relationship is something that you've got to build. You got to decide yourself that you're going to be in it until maybe the man proposed to you. Or when we look at modern day time, now we see women even proposing to man. Even though I know I'm not into that part of it yet, but just let me put it like that. Not my opinions, just let me put it like that. Relationship is not working out these days. And we're asking ourselves why. A friend said to me about 10 minutes ago about an encounter with people 70 years marriage. We talk about a person 92 years marriage be together. And you ask yourself, how did these relationships come to being? It didn't just start off as a better rose. There's a lot of patches. And like I normally say, there's a lot of mountains in relationship. But you got to have a clear mind. What are you in this relationship for? Are you in there just to swag or to nag? Are you in there just until the tables are laid? And then you clear every plate and you run. We've seen a lot of this happening. Sometimes when we use Bible scriptures to, to describe the relationship, marriage situation, a lot of folks, they think, oh, you're becoming too spiritual. But in everything that you do, it's always spiritual. I don't care how and who you are. Relationship is based on trust, being honest. You got to have empathy in relationship. And you got to be open in a relationship. Because if you are not, you're going to be dumb and you're going to be pumped. And by the time you're finished, like a gas station, you have nothing leave inside of you. And I don't care what and what anybody tells you. Because it takes you emotionally, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally and physically you are drained and you're looking to start another relationship all over again. If you have questions, you can send them in and let us discuss on this. It's not a one person 
dialogue, please. I'm just trying to clear the year. A lot of folks are being destroyed because they said that they've gone into relationship. And we have this phrase of saying, I'm in love. I'm head over heels in love. And that love is blind. And we, oh, I, you know, and then when the relationship is over, you start to say, the person is ugly. The person was this and the person was that. And you will never at times look on the relationship and say that we are partly to be blamed in the relationship. You can only give a portion of yourself and the other person will have to give a portion of themselves. Thus mean you make a bridge. You can find that you see somebody for the first time and you love that person. And then at the course of the time, you start to see the factors. That means you start to see what is in that person that you do not like. You know, wait till you go to bed before you find that out. That means you just run and jump in the bed and then you forget about the other part that the windows that you should look through, the doors that you should look through. You wait until everything is closed and then you are in the morning process and nobody is dead. Relationship is based on trust. You got to learn to dialogue. That means you better chat about the thing then. For those who understand, don't understand chat, you better talk about the thing. Get down into the pretty into the pretty little dialogue. My darling, don't let me smile and laugh. <laughs> Come on, get on the page, Pauline. You know, and you got to be really trustworthy. If I would have started saying about past relationships, it would look nasty on Facebook pages. But I have to be exact in it sometimes you put all that you want to put in the relationship and the other party is just not there you you, you spread out all the tablecloths that you know out you make all the bed that are beautiful looking and you still does not satisfy that person because what the other party did not come into the relationship for the things that you at pour him on one job, boof, inside. Because you have never discussed anything. We've been with a man for, let's say, three months. And don't tell me you don't see no flowers. Don't tell me you don't see no story. I agree that people, or man and woman, can hide things for many years. But no matter how we try to hide something, there's something that can show us. And if you ask any psychologist, they can tell you that there was a small little thing right in the middle of your eyes, seeing you, your nose was even touching it. But you weren't looking for that. So therefore, you are telling yourself that the relationship is okay. Gentlemen and ladies, good morning, Reverend. I, Julia, yeah, um, you, Juliet, uh, is, um, you've got to be sincere. Same way all the brother want to check your out, sister. you got to check out the brother. You can't just make one friend from the brother tell you that why the brother iry or the brother is good. Likewise, gentlemen, you can't say one sister told you that the sister was good and you just take it at face value. You got to learn to analyze the both sides of the coins. You got to see exactly what is missing from day one. Don't just look for my face and tell me some face pretty like how my girlfriend just said a while ago. Your face look nice. 
Or we're looking at the man pocket because we see a $2 bill, no matter what currency. And we say that he has money. I've learned over the years that a man with a car, time is very poor. Because you don't know how he got the car. And you don't know if he's able to buy the next full tank of gas. You got to know where the gentleman is working. I know some of us say, oh, the two of we can grow it together. Yes, the two of us can grow it together till you decide to kill him for the money or take out the life insurance policy on his name and kill him so you can collect. And likewise, the man can say, oh, she has money. And he started to say and make his demands being known. And because you can't fulfill the coffer and help to stabilize the balances of those bills, you run from the relationship and you get caught up on the other end of a casket. This is something that is going on. Are we really only ready for divorce? Are we only ready for while the going is good? It's all sweet and cozy and nice. But when the itch in the ditch start to be seen, we pack our bags and we run to the next available exit. My gentlemen and ladies out there, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to all of us because it has been a whirlwind in relationship over the year. The pressure, yes, the pressure will reveal the real art motive, but sometime by the time the pressure started to push, there has been spaces that was left untouched and was not filled. And that's the reason why we have the problem we're having today. As I was saying to a friend of mine before, we ladies only want, or oh, the man should give, the man should buy, the man should this, and the man should that. We want a sugar daddy. And we don't realize that not all sugars are sweet. You never taste one that is, what is unsweet. They are sugar that is not sweet. Sometimes they are artificial flavors. They are not real. And all these things we are not looking at in relationship. I'm talking about our relationship. The, the, the things that was there from day one, you did not see it because you claim to say that love is blind. Mm -mm. Love still have eyes. Love has ears. Love have a nose and a mouth. Love have a heart that's feeling. Hit no blind. Relationship is that if the man can't find a dollar tonight to put the food on the table, many of us ladies can't put a dinner upon a table because we don't have a bucketive. I don't mean another bed or another trousers. I mean you don't have no stability in your life. Your empty vessels. A whole lot of <laughs> a whole lot of sayings, but nothing to back it. You have the beauty and the looks, but nothing to hold it. Likewise, the gentleman, you come out and you dress in your, your track suit, or let me put it like that, to your, to your neckties and bows. But there's nothing behind it. You're just an empty vessel. In a relationship, you got to learn to give and to take. You got to learn sometimes that your, 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 your spouse, whether your boy one or your man one, needs space and time. Likewise, the men, the female also needs space and time. And when you can't get it, it becomes a problem and you say she started to disrespect you. 
You never analyzed the package when you were getting it. And that's why we have that kind of problem. Let me look at, let me, let me just open a little thing. When the man comes home from work, even though you might have gone to work, or some of us, the only workplace we go to is our neighbor's house. But down the road, sitting with our colleagues at the roadside. So when this partner come back home, you expect to have a five meal course, restaurant list waiting on you. So when you get in, the dishes are still left not being washed. And now you have a problem. You didn't think in the moment that when you take up the partner, you didn't take up a housewife or a houseboy. You both went in, but you never closed the door. You both come in, you never sit down. Let me give you an idea what I mean when I said the boat I will come or he come in. I know. You're both looking at each other from different angles. Who should start cuss? And who should ready to take out the next gun? Who for back the knife? And that's how you put down a dialogue. And there's no control over the things that we flustered from our mouth. And then the veranda or the balcony, the toilet and your mouth doesn't sound no different. If you want a woman to look good or you want your man to look good and you got the money, you rather spend it on your colleague on the outside. I mean, I've but I spoil the man. Or oh, me can't buy her no clothes because somebody's going to look on her. You, del you, you delusionize. Come again. You have a phone. Your phone ring. You run gone out the door. You take your phone and you start to talk about. You, when you don't want to talk, you start to click, click, click and do chat messages. Or you come up with an idea, the other party, you come up with an idea, say, boy, you're going to meet your friend down the road when you're going to another pants or you're going to a skirt. These are some of the aspects that is going on, even right in the church. So when I'm talking, I'm talking to everybody in general. Your relationship is not working because you have brought nothing in the relationship. You don't know how to build a bridge. And it's just there, one-sided. You doesn't try to even have custom made. It's one-sided. And you expect it to work. Let me get to the kitchen. I'm doing something in the kitchen. I know I'll be in a little bit of darkness because I turn off the light in the kitchen. A whole lot of time, this is what keep on happening in relationships. And nobody wants to take the blame. And uh, my fault, or uh, his fault, or uh, her fault. And this is how we lack. We lack dialogue. Last week, it did look nice. Oh, last week, she was sexy. I was looking at all the curves. And you can go out there and boast. But you have not invested anything in the relationship. She have money, so she's what? What they call it? The sugar mama. You 50 and you have a boyfriend 25 years old. You're a disgrace to society. And likewise around. Somebody who could be your granddaughter. That's the girl you have interest in. Somebody who could have been your son. Or your grandson. That's the person you have interest in. Tell me now, how can your relationship work? 
The man in the house might go out and he can only give you $3,000. And because your friend next door or down the road can have a $10,000 from her man, you having a good life will exchange it for a miserable one. Because you won the 10000 but you don't know set of a gap. You can't satisfy with the three. You, don't, you yourself don't have anything to invest in the relationship. But you want head over heels. On both sides. It don't work. And no relationship is going to work like that. I agree some men learn to chat, even though they said that men don't talk. And I agree some men are silent. Not even the lamb don't look like it's silent like them. It gives you no right to downgrade that person. Likewise to the men. You have some women. They are cosmetologists, but they have never gone to school. It gives you no right to disgrace them. A lot of times in relationship, when we are talking to our partners, our voice is louder than the rooftop. And it doesn't even matter if you live into a, con what you say, a concrete house or a 12-story building. Your voice is loud, louder than the man. And that is insecurity. Because the day when something will happen in your house, nobody will know that you're going through a problem. <laughs> oh yes, that's true. The grass is not greener on the other side. Exactly. I remember one day with my now husband, I did something and I knew exactly what I did was wrong because the moment I did it I realized that I did something wrong and when my husband got to the door and come into the house I felt my heart jerk even though my husband is a man of very few words came to the door and he stand here and he, he, he just said I and I looked up and his eyes was enough to tell me that what I did was not right. He didn't say anything. He didn't have to say two times. Because what I did, and I left it in the, in the passage, I knew, it's like I knew that he was going to say something about it. And what made matters worse... Before he could say the second word, I opened my mouth. And trust me, my voice was louder than his. And instantly as I uttered what I, what I said, not any dirty word, but what I said, I felt my eyes fill with tears. And I returned back. I sat exactly right here where I'm sitting now. And I burst into tears. And he didn't move from the door. He was still standing there. It took me about four minutes to compose myself. And I got up. I went to him by the door. He did not move. And I said, I am sorry. This will never happen again. I will never raise my voice at you. Because what you said to me was correct. The only thing my husband did was put his arm around me. We stood right at the door and my husband prayed. He began to pray and then instantly I followed on in the prayer. You see, sometimes we just... We just feel mighty. 
I'm a very impulsive person. I'm a very temperamental person. I don't see, let me just put it like that. I don't feel I fear anybody. I don't. And I'm saying this for all of you to listen. As I am a very short little lady. But I don't back down from a fight. <laughs> I, I, I don't back down from a fight. But I've learned over the years. I've learned over the years that that doesn't make me a woman. So my voice can be very loud. Very, very loud without a microphone. And I had to learn to tone it down. To tone it down. Because and one of the things I, I learned living in this country was that when you're in the tram, in the bus, these are and the train, these are public transportation. So if I'm out there, and anybody who knows me so much from Zurich here, if I'm out there in those transportation and my phone rings, I panic. Just imagine. Because I do not want anybody to hear my voice in the public being loud. And, and it's not because I am now a leader or whatever. No, no, no. I don't see the leadership yet. I'm still yearning for that leadership quality in me. But I learned that because I know that I am a woman, not a man. I learned that because I know that a child of God should not be doing such things. Sometimes when my neighbors make noise, it cramped me on the inside and I found myself become very aggressive as if just go out, open the door and just hold them and shake them. I had to learn. Likewise, the same thing in my in relationships. Many a times, ladies, let me put to the ladies, many a times you're not right. 99,9,9,9% a time you are not right. I know many of you won't agree with me on this. 99,9,9,9,9,9,9% Many times we are not right. But the weaker vessel in us is yearning for that rightful position beside a man that makes us become dominant in our own self of saying, I am right and I need to, you have to tell me that I'm right. But if you would calm yourself down, count to 10, as one of my, 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 my teachers here in Switzerland when I was doing cooking taught me. He said, if you would count to 10, retrace your word again. That means you go back into what you had said and what the person said. You will realize that you could have answered in a proper manner instead of stirring up anger in your own self. I took that and I carried on my journey. We want things from a man. We want things from a woman. But the way in which we go about it is not correct. There's a lot of deviousness in us. And at times when we open our mouth, we forgot that because it's ready on our tongue, it's the first thing that comes out. Let me go back to a conversation I had earlier with a friend. You've got to learn to treat your partners correct. If you don't like it, don't do it to anybody. The man can go out there and it's good. And another woman would admire him. Be proud. Oh, yes. Oh, my man. Oh, 
Somebody want him. Oh, yes. You got to find that as a compliment that you are treating that man good. And stop making your face look like you were baptized in lemon juice. And likewise to the men. When another man compliment your woman. I don't say touch her. I say compliment. Be happy. To say you're doing a good job. The other day I saw a video of a man hugging another man. Maybe his wife or his girlfriend. And the way he hugged her. Me, I would have whooped that man behind if I was the gentleman with that woman. And then I would have reprimanded that woman. Because what she did was also wrong. When you go out and somebody's going to greet you, put your hands out. Don't let no man be hugging you. Your breast rubbing against his breast. And he's... Touching your behind. He is past his place. I don't care who he is. You got a man standing there. And whether your man was standing there or not. That ain't no way to greet a man. There are a few things I love in the Muslim world. And I'm going to point out of one of them. They won't shake my hands. They won't. No matter how much of my colleagues that I've worked with, they will stand and they talk to me. Oh, you're not going to do fasting. We're going on Ramadan. Oh, I don't see you fasting today, whether I'm on, or doing your Ramadan or not. And they don't touch my hands. Their woman will. It's not hard, but they, the men don't. Why can't we do the same? Oh, yes, Rev. Yes, a lot of men and women do that in the church as a cover-up when hugging in church. That's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. Many of you women have so a high demand list. And if asked you to do to get all those stuff on the list that you are handing over to a man for your own self many you can't even supply not even the one of the shadows for your face and every time you pack it get empty you find another trousers it ain't good it not good it's good to ask. That's true. But some of us begging portion has made us switch bed more than how many bed a carpenter make in a year. Ladies, and I'm appealing to some of the church mothers. Are some of you ladies who are in the church that are married? And are having a relationship and you know that it's the one person you have. And also the men. When you're with your colleagues or your, your clique. or you, Tell them. Tell them the truth. And stop lying. Because you're only destroying another man's life. You see, I can, on a weekends. And I, and I say this a lot of times. Even though I always get calls on weekends. On the weekends, the Saturday, it belongs to my husband and our prayer time. The Sunday belongs to the church and my prayer time. That means on a Saturday when my husband is in the house, if he doesn't go out, I like sometimes to allow my phone to rest. Or if I have a conversation with somebody on the phone, I take another room. Because my voice is loud. And if he's watching what he likes on the phone, on the telly, 
maybe football. It doesn't matter if it's a whole football game. You will sit to watch it. If it's a documentary concerning lions and you were watching it, or tennis, he's in, or the news, he's in. And therefore, I choose to be out of his way. I don't care if his phone rings 50 times. That's not my business. I don't care if he leave the house 1,000 times. That's not my business. I don't need to know where he goes. Because one of the things we have in our relationship is that if he goes out and he said one hour, he's back here before the one hour. So, I'm cool. You see, a lot of times we break up our homes. Both men and women because of insecurity. And trust me, some men are totally insecure. Just, they are sometimes worse than women. And yet still you both are insecure. If your home... It's only built on one side. You just imagine what you have. A ticking time bomb that's ready to fall over. You have no time in your home to read the Bible. I agree you're not. You say you don't believe in no God. I agree you said this God business is not yours. But you have no time to sit down together. And reason together. Because you're watching his phone. You're watching his pocket. You're watching who is his friends. And make yourself more a disease than a disease itself. I know many of you going to bash me, but I don't care. You don't trust yourself. The man don't trust himself. So there's not a, that's not a re relationship. That's a volcano on the eruption side. Too many a times I've seen relationship breaking up. I agreed I've walked out of relationship when I thought it was not healthy for my health's sake. But one other thing I've learned over the years, the relationship that I've walked out of, and trust me, it's a whole lot. I can call any one of those guys and say hello. I can call their girlfriend or their wife. And if she's willing to speak to me, I can say, hello, it's me. Oh, yes. Because I don't try to leave behind me a door open with, gr with a grievance behind it. Because at the ending of the day, you're going to be in trouble. At the ending of the day, you're going to be in trouble. Many of you men have left out a relationship. Could be your baby mama. Your ex-wife with children. But every time you see those women. The zipper of your trousers is down. You are sick. You are typically sick. And you need a doctor. If to support your child in the past relationship. Means that another man cannot get that woman. Why did you leave in the first place? And if every time you have to give your child a dollar. You need a bed and not a bank. You are sick. And ladies, I know some of you are 60 and you're still repeating the same cycle. You need an evaluation of your scholar. 
and see if your brains are in the right places. You need to stand up and check yourself again and see if you're real. If a man leaves you or walk away and go, and he leaves a child behind, I can tell you from experience, don't run him down. When I was growing up, they told me that you don't run down a man, you don't run down money, and you don't run down motor vehicles. Three things you didn't run down. If you can't balance yourself by looking a job because you're able-bodied, look a job. Learn to save your money. Not just bringing it in all the fast food chains you can see. And every store that makes another wig. And every cosmetologist, what you call it, cosmetic shops. And knowing that you have a child. You're prone to only run from one bed to the next. Is that the kind of life you want for your children or your child? I was talking to my friend earlier on. I come to the conclusion that a lot of men don't trust themselves. So they cannot trust you, the woman. A lot of men have no principles. So they cannot follow simple rules. A lot of men, not because they can't read, they don't know what a guideline looks like because they are spiritually and mentally illiterate. If you leave a woman and you decided that you have to go back all the time, you're like the pig. Going back into the wallow. But the only difference between you and the pig. The pig think that every time they go into the mud. To mud, mud wallop. They're washing themselves clean. And you don't realize every time you return. You're destroying your character. Your image. I've learned from watching some of the documentary my husband watches, one of the lions. A lot of men call him, I'm the lion, I'm the king. You're lazy. Lazy man you are. Because it's the woman, it's, it's the lioness that hunts. Some of you lying out there. If your life depends on it, you are running. And you know it, that it's true. A woman that just only sit down and depends on a man's pocket is a ruined woman. Whether you're 20, they say, let me put it on a little, 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 little bit lower. 16, 18, 20, 22, coming up, 50, 60. And the only thing you see in a man is his money. You're in depression. Mentally, physically, spiritually, you are disabled. In a relationship, it takes two. And if it only lead one side, I'm saying you're going down. A lot of brothers are putting in the effort. But you sisters, you ain't making up the numbers. You ain't adding up. He must, he, he doesn't. He must, he, mu he doesn't. He must, he doesn't. And some of you men now, uh, might as well you get a, a statue. 
that you can put down like a figurine. She must have a certain criteria. She must look and have a certain curve. She must. And then at the ending of the day, she has to beg you for a dollar. How unbalanced can it be? A common law wife who is with one man is just as much the wife as the one who marries. I'm touching somebody's toe, I know. The common law wife under the law that only has one brother in her life. Those children are for that one man. Is just as much married. As the woman that goes before the priest. And put on a ring. And say I do. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? If you are, leave your mother and your father and cleave to that one man, cleave to that one woman, you are married. You're no longer common law. You are married in the sight of God. I'm touching up somebody. And I want to see the man that deaf is to tell me that it's a lie. When you have roamed around the earth, you've been in all the different parishes and cantons, in all the villages, and you've gone to every bed, river bed, sea sand bed, you name the bed, and you have not defiled your body with another and you found one woman and you decided that you're going to take this one woman you forsake all others and you take this one woman you don't have money to go to the priest but you've clinked with each other together you have become the lawful husband and she has become the lawful wife. I, Sister Diana, thank you, ma'am. You have become that one, you have become the husband and wife. Many of us who have been divorced, 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 divorced. You hear how many times divorce I say? Divorced, marry, divorced, marry, divorced. And you've come to Christ and asked God for forgiveness to Christ Jesus. And you have waited. I said, you what? You have waited. You have repented. And now a man has found you. And marry you. You're no longer the old you. You have no intention of be going back to the old you. And now you are married. You, God has forgiven you. I don't care what nobody won't tell you. If the man takes you and see that... He sell every properties that he have. Let me go into some Bible. And he so he sell everything that he has and he bring the money and he marries you. And you becomes you. And Christ in you. That man is your husband. By the day that you decided to walk out of the marriage bed, 
still married, go down to the next door, straight down the avenues, over across the bridge to another man's territory, you've become defiled. Amen. I neglect Nigli. I hope I pronounce your name right. That's true. We've got to learn some things that is going on around us that we have to stop. You got to stop. You see, we 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 labeled some people and thinking that we are better than they. I've learned in this country one thing. A man marry his wife, husbands and wife. The man goes out to a nine, let me just put it so, a nine to five work. And the woman gone to the, to the what they call this kind of all. Just said, the woman go to a certain office and she get a permission to violate her body with other men. And they give her a permit and tell her that she can work her body to get money, pay her tax and support her husband. Such relationships are not good. You have defiled the matrimonial bed. I don't care what you want to tell me say. You defile the matrimonial bed. A pastor in a church married to his wife. Talking about relationship and why marriages are failing. You're married to a woman... Can't touch the man but because I don't know when man married man what they do. You're married to a woman. And you're in the church. They esteem you as leader. And you're in the church. And the deacon's wife. The choir sister. The husha woman. And you are married. And you think it's you deem it pos a possession because it's your properties. And you avoid another man from marrying that sister. Are you going to marry that woman when you have defiled her? Are you going to make her your wife? I agree in some cultures and I don't go into nobody's culture. I'm just saying it from the Bible principles. If a man, if the woman agrees for a man to take another wife, not the man, the woman agrees that her husband can take another wife. Max in a question. Ladies, are you in agreement? If you see a friend of your another woman out there and you find favor in that woman, would you allow that woman to marry your husband? <laughs> Diana, don't 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 mess up. <laughs> I love your answer. Would you deem would you see it fit that your husband to marry that woman? Your husband did not go out there to get the woman, you took it upon yourself and go out there and find a woman for your husband. Would you allow that, ladies? Come on, ladies, participate. This is not just my conversation. <laughs> Make sign of the cross. <laughs> Reverend, don't let me, don't get me laughing. I want to have a serious conversation. <laughs> you see, in the olden days, 
And many of you are, who have gone through the Bible have seen this happen. So there are cultures that deem that fit even in this time. But on those hands, I notice that it's the men who go and look the woman, not the woman herself who goes out and look a man, look a woman for the husband. So we would say we are not in agreement with such lifestyles. I'm going to throw in another question, ladies. Literally the same. Listen again. If sicknesses reach to a woman who has children and a husband, and she knows that she's going to die, careful before you answer, listen before you answer. And this woman knows that she's going to die. She doesn't want to leave her husband alone. And she has a trusted friend. Would you be in agreement that she leaves her friend with her husband to raise her children? Do you think... A woman that is dying, repeat my question so you can all listen and give me your honest opinion. A woman is dying. She has a very trusted friend. This woman that is dying has children. But she doesn't want to leave her children just so alone. So she asks a trusted friend to take full responsibility of her child and that the friend should marry her husband in the case of her death. Would you agree with such? You said no. Oh, okay. Well, these things do happen. The, it does happen. It does happen that the, a friend died. When the friend died, she asked her husband, her, uh, she asked her friend, a woman died. Let me, a woman died. And when she was dying, she asked her trusted friend, to marry her husband so that both of them could take care of the children that she would left behind. She trusted her friend enough to no, ma'am. This is what I'm trying to let you understand. In most cases, the husband decision here is irrelevant it's the wife decision uh, let me read what reverend says i've heard of a story where the women were on their dying beds and they refer their husbands to a trusted friend sometimes these scenarios are pure but if i ask the question if the husband conformed without hesitation did he always like her or if he didn't Will he hesitate initially? In this, in this scenario, what I am saying that the husband always just like the friend for being a friend because he knows it's the wife's best friend. And the, the friend was also always there when he would travel and therefore would stay with his wife so it's not a part where instead of wife the, the the man would also like the woman or in the sense of wanting her for bad reasons or whatever mm -mm. it's a totally different um decision and the wife uttered that was her wish that her friend would marry 
would the husband would marry the friend. But she asked the two of them in their presence. She didn't go behind anybody's back. So these, these are some of the things that happens in relationship. And one has to be totally honest with each other. Honest, I was reading something this week where on another on another page where a lady where this question was was asked and I'm here's the question what it was asked if you were going on the trip and your friend was coming to your house would you no you no not not a trip you were working at night for the ladies who are nurses you were working at night but you had a friend who was coming over before the decision came that you'll be working at night. Would you allow your friend to, um, to stay in your house knowing that you have a husband in your house? Would you do that? You, your friend was coming to visit from maybe from a far distance or from another country. So you were working on day. You did not know that you would get to be changed over. So while the friend was already on the way coming here, you found out that you have to work night shift. Would you allow your friend to stay in your house? Ladies. I do understand your question, and I, I understand for the children's sake, but also for my children's sake, the friend and the husband, if they agree, then I would say in peace, it would be okay. I would give them my blessing. Thank you, my darling friend. Yes, because they, there are circumstances that such thing would happen. You see... This is the open-mindedness. Thank you, Nigli. This is the open-mindedness of a relationship. Because you don't know what can happen. I'm not going to say it will happen to everybody. This is the basic of open-mindedness in questions that needs to be asked in our homes when we have our husbands. So as to clear the ear, how far and how trustworthy are we in our relationship i agree at times one what one partner will answer oh i don't mind but within themselves they have another thing going on so these are the relevant things that happens in our marriages in our relationships that needs to be settled before we talk about, we call it falling in love, head over heels and all these kind of things. Because when such scenarios happen for real in your marriage, you're going to break. You're going to feel that somebody literally destroy your life going to give you another scenario. Let's say you go out with your husband for lunch. Just, just a normal lunch. Then when you go out, you're not sure if he has money. You just say you want to go out to lunch. And the first restaurant you see, not, I don't mean chain, I mean restaurant, real restaurant <laughs> Not fast food, Kete. The real rest, the first restaurant you've gone into, you have money. And you go into a restaurant and you start a harder. You don't, you're not sure how much money your husband has in his pocket. You start a harder. The menus are like $30, $45. A hundred dollars. Where would your highs be? You 
gone out with him. You're not sure if he has money. Because you never discuss anything about money. You just want to go out and have. You're not sure if he has money. But the first restaurant you see, it has a big name and you just want to go there and eat. I tell it here. And you want to eat and you walk into that restaurant and you, you just want, that's just the restaurant you want to eat. You just order. And when it comes and the bills come, and the bill is over the budget, would you as a woman go into your pocket and fit, foot that bill? That's what we call it, foot the bill. Would you as the wife foot the bill? <laughs> you didn't wait. You go to the thirty dollar menu. The one one of the dishes cost thirty dollars, sweetheart. One of the did di 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 the dishes cost thirty dollars. That means if you order a plate of salad, it costs thirty dollars. And the, the 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 main menu and everything comes up, so the prices range from thirty dollars. Not that you go to a restaurant that is only thirty dollars. Let us talk about that afterward. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Diana. I, I knew you would say yes, <laughs> sweetheart. For some reason, I know my I know my darling would say yes. You see, these are some of the things that we've got to look for in a marriage and in a relationship. It's not who works the most money. Because a lot of times I've seen where men work less money in a foreign country than the woman. But the man would decide to spend what he has. And the woman would sit down there and think in that. I'm not talking directly about marriage. I'm talking about also a relationship, reverend. A relationship. You see, a lot of times, this is a lot of times I see, a lot of times we categorize only because you're married to the person. But what if you don't marry to the person, but you are in a relationship together? You see, because you're saying here, Rev, if, it's, if they are married, it shouldn't matter because they are one. But I'm not talking about, you see, this is, the, this is all the time where we, we, miss, we miss the opportunity of having a real relationship. A lot of times a man is with a woman before they are married. Yes. A lot of time a man is with a woman before. It's not every culture. You just jump in and you just got married and you spend $100,000 on a marriage, on a wedding. And tomorrow morning you do not have a marriage. That's another, another part of the, 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 the question. Okay. And therefore, the, the man, who would you, you jump in to pay? I'm talking about, because we have, we are, I'm trying to help young women who are, who are in a relationship, maybe not yet married. Maybe they're on their journey to marriage. And we need to break the gap. We need to break an ice from now in their life. We need, so we need to teach them. Because a lot of times, they are not yet in the church, so they don't have a, pastor, a pastoral care package yet you know i'm talking about a relationship the relationship aspect you see because a lot of time relationships gather children before the marriage even started to come in when you're in a marriage situation there's another that's another totally bundle talking about the relationship part first I have two quests, so I'm, I'm trying to balance them. When a man has his wife, it's not all the time the husband pays. 
let me give you something from Switzerland. A man invited his, a white, his woman out for a coffee. And then the, it's the man who does the invitation, but when you go out, you pay two separate bills. Who on my page have ever had that kind of thing happen to them? Two separate bills, but one person was the one that invited you. Oh, let's go out. Oh, Diana, let's go out for, 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 for lunch. But when you end up, you're paying your home bills yourself. That's what I mean. There are women that invite men out, and there are men that invite women out. But when you go out, you both pay separate bills. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's a profound. <laughs> Diana, Diana, there's a lot of things we got to learn. Let me go over to the marriage section of it now. You're married. You bring, but you don't have enough money as the husband. But because you're embarrassed, you decide to bring out your woman, but you're not expecting that her, her taste would gone over your budget. Would you ask her to put in a part of the money? You're a man, married. You bring your wife out, your double I-F-E out. She's wearing the ring on her finger. She's the wife. But you bring her out, but you never expect her taste to jump over your pocket margin. Would you be humble enough to ask the wife to help you to pay for the gift that is given to her? Where are the men? I need to hear. It's not a joking matter. It's a serious matter. <laughs> it's, it's very serious. Are you, you, lady, you people want me just to laugh. For some reason, you like my smile. Things like these do happen in relationship. And these are some of the things that comprise in the packet of trusting each other, depending on each other two sides. And not just one-sided. A mutual trust and understanding builds a marriage, builds a relationship. You can go out. The man only go out with $200. But while you are out there, you wanted something extra for $50. But he just doesn't have the money. And therefore, if he said to you, oh, honey, can I have a $50 from you? It shouldn't be even the part of saying, oh, why, 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 why? You, you, you can't even buy me the gift. It should not be to that part at all. There's a kind of marriage happening around, let me put it out, in the, in the, in the island of Jamaica. Where pastors are marrying couples and the pastor doesn't have a, a credential to marry any, or a certificate to marry anybody. He can preach, he can do anything. He cannot marry. Then he called for a wedding in the church. And seven couples decided to get, get each. Hmm. They all gathered together. The marriage vows were proclaimed. And they got married. Gone to the point, baby comes in. 
And then two years later, the couple found out that they were not, few other couples, let me just put it like that, found out that they were not married at all. There's nothing to say that they were married. What do you do in that situation? Well, my beloved friend says, yes, ma'am, my husband knows we both have each other, no matter what the situation is. Thank you for this input. This will do a lot out there for those who are, I am not 26 years married, but thank you for this beautiful impact. We're just trying to change lives, trying to help young folks. The Bible have it clearly stated that the old should teach the young. And we have to give, we have to help the young people around us. A lot of stuff they might not come to the church to hear. But many of them are on Facebook. They like the bookers. They are on the grammars, Instagram. You know, they are. Oh, my darling, I know you have to go to work. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And we've got to, we got to, we got to learn to give them, to help, help them, help them. We got to learn to help them. It's not every time we, um, we got to bash them because why? A lot of them don't know. Their parents also do not know. Their parents were not even trained to know themselves. And therefore, they cannot teach their children. They cannot teach their children. They cannot. They cannot teach their own children. They have no idea how to go about it. When my friend bring up this discussion, because we always talk about relationships in a much deep, you know, way and, and stuff. And my friend looked at me and said, please, you got to put something in writing. You got to do a Facebook Live. You got to do something because you, you got it in you. you. The person even went on to say, I think it's time for you to even have a go out there. And that's the person's prior for me to go out there and to teach Young woman like myself. I, Sister Jan, God bless you too. You know, teach others. Because a lot of us are messing up. We are destroying our... We are destroying relationship. We are destroying our lives. We are destroying a lot of stuff. This is what Reverend says. I know of someone who had a public wedding and everything. And later on... In the marriage, his wife left him. He continuously looked to see if his wife filed a divorce. He found out while being married for a few years that the wedding of a bishop never turned in license. In the book and law, his marriage never existed, so need for a divorce. He's free man now. She left him and stopped talking to him. These things are happening. These things are happening. You see, these things are happening. And it's happening constantly. Ruining people's life. If you are getting married, if you are getting married and you're in the Caribbean or anywhere, I want us all to, it's okay, I, we understand. If we are getting married, seek out a licensed minister. Not one who say he is a minister. Make sure that you see the credential of that person and not just a photocopy of any license. Make sure that you look into his credential pretty well good. 
because there are some very nice photocopy out there that looks like original, but they are not. You have people also to be buried dead, and they have nothing to say that they can officate that part of it. So we have to be careful out there. You have to be careful. We stand behind the pulpit and we are renegating and we are renegade and we are liars and we are thieves and we are deceiving people because it's, it seems to the when you marry somebody, you can collect a whole lot of money. Don't know why I get into this one. <laughs> Ministry. We have to nowadays see what we have to see and see it properly. In your relationship, it's likewise the same. Gentlemen out there, a man out there, please, I'm begging you. Know the kind of family that the woman that you're taking into your life comes from. Because a, tank, a cantankerous woman can never be stilled. If her, if her family home is on fire, you can't halt it. If her family where she's coming from is on fire, you don't have no fire brigade in your life to hold that one. Know the family background. Likewise, ladies, not because he looks good, not because you see $2, not because he can buy you a bottle of beer, not because he can bring you to McDonald's, not because he can, no, no, no. Know the kind of woman that raised him. Even if the daddy runs away. Know the kind of woman that raised the man you're going to spend your life with. Because many of you are digging pit and you don't even have shovel. Because he spend, he have a $10 bills and he cut it up to $1. And you see $1, you think that he's rich? A poor man drives a car, just the same as a rich man. You cannot take up a man without not knowing if he has three shirts. You have, even if he said he's a minister, try to find people out of his congregation that really knows him. Likewise with us as women, gentlemen, try to find more people than the people that you think you know who knows the woman that you want to marry or the woman that you want to have a relationship with. I remember some years ago when I had a, a previous husband and he was telling me that somebody told him something about me and I remember saying to him I can give you a list of men names to put with those that you said people tell you about and I can give you a photograph of me and I can help you get government to put it up in Zurich city and make all the names be known and see if any one of your friends are on the list. He was dumbfounded because the truth in the matter is this. Many a times we ladies jump for the first pretty looking man Many times some of you men look for the nice chicken. 
but you're not sure if it's seasoned properly. And you ladies don't even sure if the man is a man. Because now we realize that they look like men, walk like men, but they are not men. She looked like a chicken. She cooked like a chicken. But she has no breasts. She only has breasts, legs, and thigh. And the inside has only doo doo. Nothing more. <laughs> you left it get off the page, Reverend. You see, we've got to learn that in our relationship. Unless you only want a one night stand. If you can't know where the man work, I don't say you go there and, and um stalking the man. If you can't know th three of his friends outside of the one that you know. If you don't know his mama. And if you have a daddy who sticks around and you don't know his daddy. Why do you want that man? For what reason? What are you trying to build? A fort knock? Mm -mm. No, no, no. And ladies, you are just, you, I, I don't know. I'm trying to get you from not being so easy. Stop selling to the, to the lowest bidder and thinking you are the highest bidder. I realize a lot of men think that there are women out there that are no longer virgin. Because why? They have circled the atmosphere as if there was sun and come back down on earth. So they think that everybody has been polluted. And many of you ladies think that you have seen all the nightingales and all the night. You have traveled to the moon and back. So you believe that there is no man out there. But I am telling all of us. The man that belongs to you. Cannot come to you. Because you know why? You have. Too much steel before you. You have steel. 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 You have surround yourself with steel. And the worst part of it. They are full steels. Because the only thing they do is show you they're glistening, but they are not real. A lot of us women out there, you're trying to make yourself look like somebody who you are not. And no wonder. The man who is looking for a wife can find you. So the next second best you get, you think you have struck gold. And two days, three days on the road, you found that all that glitters is not gold. You ladies, come on. There's a man out there for you. But where are you? We heard all the things that say, brother, where art thou? But sister, where are you? Brother, where art thou? But my sisters, you are lost and undone. 
If many of you would know the Proverbs 31 from 10 down to 31, you would realize that a good woman is priceless. A good woman have her own collections. A good woman can give out. A good woman attain. A good woman can provide. A good woman can maintain. A lot of you out there. All you are good for is walking in ease. Nothing more. A lot of you men out there, you're a spoiled brat that need a Sybil Jack to whip you again and again and again. And when the whipping is over, it starts all over again. Because the funny thing is this, and I don't say it funny. You don't even look after yourself. You don't look after yourself. You want a woman with all the fine materials. And you spend all the money you have on the fine materials. But you don't take care of yourself. I hate to see a man dressing shabby and a woman looking like diamonds. What, what does it do? If the man looks cheap and you look overdressed, there's no balance. No balance at all. You see how you want them glisters and them bling blings and them bang bangs and them bings and bang bang. Yes. yes. You must have them and the band must also looking good. Because when the man looks... And my friend used a raw, raw and uncut. He looks like he's poor, even though you dress in fine linen. These people are getting me real mad. What kind of house am I living in? I wonder when we get down to hell if all the doors are going to slam the same way. Sorry, my friend, but it, it's annoying. We don't respect each other these days. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It hurts. In our relationship... Our homes. There is something missing. There is something missing in our homes. The way we talk to each other. The way we communicate with each other is, it's 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 like something out of space. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. 17 years and I end up in a prison. Gosh. Ooh, Lord have mercy. It's not good. I want us to really, ladies and gentlemen, please, or gentlemen and ladies, let me give you all the good respect. 
Gentlemen and ladies, I want you to analyze your life. It's not about starting all over again. It's about analyzing your life. Thank you. Analyzing your life and see where you've gone wrong. Reverend said to give us some advice on blended family. A topic that is really something. A father that steps up is not a stepfather. And likewise, a mother that steps up is not a stepmother. She's a mother. Even if the child in question or the children in question was not your birth child. Let me get into that. Let me get a little grip on it. A man is in love with a woman. He has no children, but she does. But he loved this woman from childhood days. And though their part of diverted and they come back together, he wants to marry this woman. In another scenario, a man has three children plus grandchild, grandchildren, right? And He's now wanting to marry a woman who has two kids of her own. A lot of times we, oh, they're not my children. Oh my, I have to take up this woman with, with children. And we grumbled before we even enter the relationship, not even realizing what we are doing. We have to analyze before we go into this relationship, knowing that though these children are not ours, like I said before, a father that step up is not a stepfather. We have to analyze the situation before you get into the, into the, into the relationship. When those children misbehave they might talk back at you because you're not the real biological parent you're just walking into the relationship so there are times they're gonna drives you up the wall and there are in some cases that they're very wonderful children But before that, you have to, do you love the woman? Do you love the man? When you're outside of a relationship, we say we are in love or we love. And then when we seal the package, we forget that there are, let me put it like this, attachment to the package. And we are in now, and what do we do? I am a mother that step up because my, what you call, my husband, children, I never consider them my stepchildren. I consider them my own children. So if I would tell somebody I had four biological kids and now I have Let's say three outside children. They are not outside. Mm -mm. Because we're in a union together as husband and wife. So they are not, they are not outside. My children have children, have fathers have children. I never seen them. Maybe I'm different. I can only talk on my side. I never seen them as, even though we are no longer together. Been years and ages, my kids are grown, have children and grandchildren of their own. Their sisters, their brothers, if they would come to me or even visit me 
or if I would go to visit and I see them, I never really consider them another person's child because why? They are related to my children. They are my children, brothers and sisters. So therefore, likewise, my husband children, I don't consider myself to be a stepmother. I consider myself to be their mother, not biological mother, but their mother. And why I put it like that is the fact that my husband and I are married. We respect each other. We have a good marriage together. So I could not consider his children my stepchildren. I rather consider them my children. On the contrary, there are families who have children from previous marriages or previous relationships and the children have no behavior. Or the man will think, oh, they are not mine. I can't marry. I can't be supporting another man's child. And we can't, I can't support them. They're not mine. The man must come and mine his children. And the story continues. Yeah, some men don't want to marry a woman with another who is already a mother. He wants to marry a woman that does not have any children. Here is a story now. What if the woman that you marry without a child has done away with a whole lot of babies that you don't know about? And now you're in this relationship and there no baby can come. What do you do? I'm not saying a man must run away and leave his responsibility like a black, like our black Negroes, they do. Negroes, they do. No. I mean the men who are daddy, but because they and the mother have no more relationship, but you went into that relationship. You got to understand that you love the mother. They have a saying in the Caribbean, in, actually in Jamaica, if you love the cow, you're going to love the calf. If you say you love that woman, and she comes with a package, those children or child, or that child, you got to tell yourself, I'm going to love that child. As if I had given, I was the father of that child. A lot of time in the, in the black communities, I've seen this being pushed out there and it's like a, a tragedy. And men are running away from relationship. Now they're in a relationship and they are still denying and they're still running away. Let me read, read what Reverend said. Why is there such a stigma in the black community? But more so West Indies Caribbean folks regarding blended family. Many times family members are already self-projecting and proclaiming the trajectory of how the relationship would go before it even start. Sometimes people acquainted with us may see us in a similar situation so they automatically deem that it will fail. You see, it's a mindset. It's a mind playing bugging game that many of us have put ourselves into. Not because my friend's marriage failed doesn't mean mine has to fail. Not because the step, the, that man run away, leave his children. It doesn't mean I as a man have to run away, leave mine. Not because that girl 
was some wayward girl while she was with that man doesn't mean that my woman has to be the same or my man has to be the same. It doesn't, what because the woman has a child before doesn't deem her unfit in society. It's wherein a lot of time this becomes a major issue and it should not be. If I would go through the blended family, we see a lot of this scouting through Facebook. And it works pretty well. We see some that is capsized like boats turning upside down on a stormy sea. What makes your relationship with that woman so good? Is the fact that you love her. And in loving that woman, both of you have to show those children or that child that the child is welcome in that union. Both of you have to sit down and reason out together because there's a child involved that is from, some, is from another man's loins. But that child is human. You're not animals. You have to sit down daily to confront the things that gonna make the marriage or the relationship toppled over. The child cannot see you as the, as the father and it should not be seeing you as the father. But the child should be seeing you as somebody who loves their mother enough to say, I respect this man because he's shown much respect to my mother. That child should be looking at both of you and said, not even saying he wants you to be his father. He wants you to be his friend. Or she wants to, oh, I wish my daddy was here and do the things you do with me. You see, a lot of times, our, us as women, likewise men, I view a situation somewhere else. And we tend to bring that on with us. Oh, my brethren have 10 baby mothers. And you think it's cool. My girlfriend has five baby father, and we think that it's cool. Oh, she can get money from Tom, Dick, Ari, John, and Sasa. It's not healthy. Ladies out there, I'm telling you from experience, it's not healthy. Men, I am telling you also, it's not healthy. The man who steps up in your child's life is not always the devil. The mother that steps up in your child, the woman that steps up in your child's life is not always the witch. You see, what if it's not, what if it's you is the problem? Now you're trying to pregnant your children's brain with contempt. And hatred and maliciousness. So if they go, if they come to you, you have to question them what did the witch said and what did that man say? And the, the story go round and round and it never finished. A woman takes up a man, even though she has a child, because it's a woman sometimes take up man. And then the man come in the life and the man wants to patch that child as if the child was some sort of, of a problem. Remember, you went into the relationship 
knowing that there was an offspring that was not your offspring. I remember growing up, I know a man who had about 25 children. I'm not quite sure how much the, if the wife had about four, but I know he had 25 children. Came to a point where that man could not see so properly. So sometimes when, when the children would visit the home, the wife treat them pretty much good. Everybody loves the wife. But the man couldn't remember who their mother was. So he would, and who is your mother again? This is not a story, this is real. Who is your mother again? He could not remember their mother's name. But one thing he, remember, he knows, that the woman that he lives with in the house, she never rejected one of those kids. She never, re she never treated them as if she was what you call stepmother. She treated each of them as they were her own. We want the man, and we don't know that the man come with also with a package. We want the woman, but we don't know that the woman also come with a package. So in such a relationship, there's no love. There is no love at all. There was never, will never, and can never be love. Because if you cannot love the child... As a child was your own, you have never loved the parent. If you cannot sit with a child and read bedtime story, teach the child how to do the homework. Teach the child how to be a, a, a better person in society. You have never loved the mother or the father. If you cannot train up the child in the way he should go, that one day he may not depart from it, you will always remember it. You have never loved in your life. When I entered into a relationship with anybody, I knew I had kids and I had my kids young. The first question I asked was, do you have children? And how much? Because that was very important for me. The next question I asked was, do you support those children? How much time do you spend with those kids? Because I know that if you cannot take care of your child, you're not in a position to take care of me. I had to learn that lesson real hard. A man who loves his children will love the woman that he is with. A woman that loves her own children and that of someone else's children, she will love the man that fathers those children. None of my children fathers, I don't hate them. Mm -mm. I don't have that time. I'm too busy trying to make it right in my life to hate them. The men who couldn't step up, they didn't do me any wrong. They did it to themselves. A man who cannot step up to his responsibilities, sweetheart. Or a woman who cannot step up and be the mother. Gentlemen and ladies, I'm telling you. They're not doing you any wrong. They're doing it to themselves. I had an encounter um, 20... 24 years ago with a woman I won't say where with a woman and she was at a stage in life with no one to take care of her 
nobody to take care of her. She herself had no children. But her husband, who was laid, had children. But they did not come to look at her. And I question myself. You ladies out there, be careful how you treat other people's children. Yesterday, I think I put up about pedophiles. Some of you ladies are pedophiles to other people's children. And many of you men are the same. You are tearing down. You're not building up. You're tearing down lives. The my mistakes are many. But there's no child that can say I tear them down. I'd rather give my last to a child than give it to an to a, a, a what you call it, an adult person. You see the walk we walk today might look like, oh, I'm just walking all alone. But there comes a day in your life and mine when the reflection of our youthfulness will taunt us, taunt many of us who've lived to reach to a certain age. Some of us are not even getting to the age. We have built so many brick walls. And we have nothing in our hands to fix the patches when all are making through them. We cannot. How did I start this? I was talking about what is in our life? What makes our relationship have a gap? What? Hello, Antoinette. I, Chevrolet, I think so. And um, Marikui, thank you for joining in our conversation. You've got to learn, ladies. You've got to learn, men. You've got to learn to make your relationship worth the while. You're coming from two different households. Coming together to be one. Whether you have joined with a ring. Or you just say you are living together as, as woman and man. But you need to bring something. In. If you want the relationship to work. To the extent of marriage. And beyond the wedding day, you got to bring something in and stop depending on just a man. Gentlemen, you got to bring something in. Instead of just waiting for the opportunity to gnash and run. Because there's always losers. And trust me, it's not one that loses, it's both that loses. Because if you run and leave a child behind, you lose. If you run without a child behind, you still lose. So whatever way you do it, you're going to lose. Because the next place you run to, may not be the same. They have a saying, you jump out of the pan and you jump into the fire. A lot of times we could have the best, but we throw it away. We just throw it overboard. As if we were casting lots and the lot fell on us and they throw you overboard. But just to remind you that there's not a whale to take you in. You might be swallowed by a shark. And that will be the end of you. Or a crocodile. 
Ladies, it, 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 you know, it, I could go on and on and talk about relationship. You're not meeting the men halfway. Gentlemen, you are demanding too much. And that's why it's not working. Oh, it's the woman role is in the kitchen. The woman role is in this. And the woman role is this. And what's your role? When a man catch 40 years old, and I see this in a movie, but it comes to be my reality. When a man catch 40 years old, and all he does is just walk around with his hanging all over the place. That man is in, what do you call it? <laughs> Menopause in his brain. His whole entire head. If doctors had even opened it, they would have seen that it is frost. Nothing is in it. And likewise to you ladies. You catch 30, 35, 40. You may be in my age, coming up, going over. And you have nothing, nothing with your name on it. Something wrong with you. Oh, me, look, me, wait on a man. I'm waiting on a man. Which man? Did you put any out there? Did you birth any put down out there old enough to marry you? No, you did not. You did not. So how are you sitting down? Why? And while you're sitting down waiting on the man, what are you doing? What are you doing that when the man sees you, he will go and sell everything that he had. That means he will leave every other woman, everything else that he was running after and said, like what the Bible says, when a man finds a, a good piece of land, he goes sell everything that he have to come and purchase it. What do you have? A big mouth and makeups? Mm. Oh no! Hey, yeah, no, my, the man. I, he has to have money. Did you give him any to put down? Oh, he got to have a house. Did you build one? And he must not have any children. So you're what? Are you virgin? Oh, me, I want a sugar daddy. Did you put sugar on him? Did your daddy have sugar? No. So, ladies, step up your gears. Oh, he has money. He has a lot of money. And oh, he wear nice, fine clothes. And you, what do you wear? You are naked? You don't have money. You don't have no house. You have an iPhone. You can't even pay the bills. You have a whole lot of bills. And you want a man to come in and pay them. So he's what? Is he something that you put, you throw out like a fish at a harpoon to come back into you? Ladies, you're messing up. To the men out there, oh, I want one. She must look like this, and she must look like this, and she must look like this, and she must look like this. Mm. Did your mama look like that? Oh, she must talk like this. She must talk. What is your background? You see, they have a saying that when you see a man that is decent and kind, and you can say that he was raised by a proper woman. But sometimes he ain't you. Sometimes mama ain't got nothing. Nothing. Mama poor. Mama ain't got nothing to she backside. 
Mama ain't got nothing. But you know what mama got? Mama got dignity. Oh, yeah. Mama know how to talk. Mama groom her son pretty well good. You see, when you run into something, make sure you know that it's either you crash or you run to sit down. But stop, look at everything like an ATM machine. A lot of you men out there want something just to put on your trophy belt. Go into the boxing ring and get one. Some of you don't have nothing. You have, when I say nothing, I mean you ain't got nothing. You ain't got no dignity. The way you dress, your pants down all the way behind your behind. You, you, you don't have nothing. You can't even buy yourself if it, if it was that to depend on for you to survive. You don't know where to lay your head. But you're looking a woman. You hook up in your mama's house and you are still 35. You're sleeping on the couch. Still asking mama for breakfast. If your mama don't cook, you're quarreling. And then you blame it on society. Oh, I didn't grow up with no father. Ooh, ooh. So what are you now, a man or a boy? The police catch you so many times and you're still looking a woman. Mm -hmm. You see, these are the things, ladies and gentlemen, you got to look, search the man background. Not his pants pocket and his zipper. Because they don't match. A man can, I've learned this, a man can have a hundred dollars. He don't even have a hundred. He share them into one dollar bills or twenty dollars. And the rest is only one dollars. He spend the twenty so that you can see it. That's all there is in his life. He ain't got nothing more. He's poor. And when I say poor, I don't mean just not, no, he's poor. His mentality is poor. His clothes is poor. He's just poor. I'm not talking about a man that is working and struggling and you can go look a job and you help him work. To, no, 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 that's name poor. I'm talking the man, he has all the money in the world and he is still poor. His old dignity about him is just poor. Nothing. He has no character, no dignity. Nothing. If you throw water on him, it can't even tap him. He has nothing. But he walks out there and at times he's driving up in a car that he... If you stand up good to look, he has to borrow money to buy the gas or beg. And that's the man you want to spend the rest of your life with. That's the man you think is on the top. That's the man who you will kill somebody just to have. He's married. And that's the man you want. Somebody as his husband. You get the man. And he has children on the outside. But you don't want the children. You get the woman. And she has kids of her own. You don't want them. Tell me what do you want. You're with her. And she gets pregnant. And the child comes, and before the child ever comes, you run, you're gone. You're running to the next custom to see if you can get another child there. And then you end up having 10 children, but you never give any one of them 
a chance to call you daddy. But you're walking and you're telling everybody you've got kids. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in trouble. Your relationship is in trouble. You don't trust your husband. He don't trust you. If he's making a telephone call and you're in the room, he can't make it because you're going to hear his conversation. By the time you have a conversation and you decided to, it's boiled on to a little argument, your voice is loud. That even the, can, the chandelier or the lamps are already shaking because the volume is too high and temperament flies. And one is lying in the morgue and the other is in the prison cell. Ladies, men, no anger management. Everybody has a right. And none is there to listen to each other and sit down, think things over and said, we can't continue like this. This is too much. I'm feeling so many pains on the inside. We can't go on like this. And you two could hold on together. And said, we got to stop. We're adults. We got to stop doing this to each other. Let us recheck ourselves. No, we don't want to do this. You want the pastor, you want the pastor's wife. You want the deacon, you want the deacon's wife. You want the young church members, you want the young children on the street. You don't want, you, you just want to destroy everything and you have never built anything. My fellow human citizens, men and women, a relationship needs two persons. A relationship needs trust, needs honesty. A relationship Needs people that can reason together, come to an understanding, and then make a decision. If you were 20 and you had two men, three men, now you're 40, you should have only one. If you become 30, 35, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 50 going up. And you're still looking for that man who only has money. Your mindset is poor. It's very poor. And gentlemen out there that calls yourself gentlemen. If you're looking for children and think that they are women, you're in for a big trouble. If all you see is, is just the young children, them seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. And these are the women that you want. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say it. You are homeless. You are poor, degrading, pedophile, murderers, you name it. And if you're older than the ages, that the age should be ages. And you're looking for a young lady, 25 years old and under. Something is wrong with you. 
and if you're a grandfather and if you have a daughter who is also 26 and you yourself is looking for somebody 26 years old you're a sick man and need medication because something's wrong with you and some of you ladies who like sugar daddies what are you calling sugar daddies? Mm -mm. Those sugars are not sweet. Because those men, when they get wild like a lion, they will shoot you and kill you. Not going around the corner with anybody today. They will shoot you and kill you because your love for money is going to kill you. They're going to kill you. And some of you ladies who are taking out life insurance policies and telling your friend, your man, and who knows what. You have just signed your debt warrant. Those of you who open bank account and let beneficiaries know that their names are in that bank you have just signed your debt warrant because you're stupid as stupid can stupid. And most of you men out there, I don't say you don't love your wife, you love your girlfriend. But you got to know when to walk and leave them. Or you're going to be dead. D-E-A-D -E dead. Because some of these women nowadays, from what I see, they will pay men. They will, no, no, no. Pay. They will sleep with men to kill you. Because you are stupid. Stupid as stupid as stupid can be. So in all the, our relationship talk, it bows, it comes down to the fact that in your relationship, if the woman can't honest with you, if you can't honest to the woman, leave the relationship from the one. And there are signs. In every relationship, there are signs that it's not compatible for you. Don't wait till they, you're dead and they come crying crocodile tears. Saying that they miss you when you're gone. Because a lot of these people out there, they have no soul, no heart. They will kill you and pretend that they miss you. And then they start, I did not know what happened. I didn't mean to do it. They meant it all along for you. Because you thought you were playing the card game. And the card game was not for you. We hear it a lot. The last one we read, I read, I was of it. the woman paid life insurance in her man's name. A young man who was honest with her. And she paid to kill him. And when the killing did not happen the way she wanted, she went herself and finished the job. I ain't playing with you. Because it's real. So, I thank you all for watching. <laughs> I really thank you all. And I hope that you've learned something out of this. And if there's a topic that you want me to discuss, please do write it in the inbox. And let me, with the help of God, and with a few ex experiences that I had, try to discuss it. And if I've been a blessing to you, yeah, 
continue. And if you want to sow into my ministry over here, I'll be so grateful. God bless you all. And let me get on my dinner. It's, um, what time do I have here? It's late in the night. <laughs> oh, it's not night, actually, fully night. But let me see what time do I have. Wow. Oh, it's 6.47 p.m. So, I'm grateful for your watching uh, me joining in. And um, thank you all. Janet, Spatsy, Antoinette, che Chevette, Mariquette, Pedagay, Reverend Scott, Annette, Nigli, and to all of you, I can't see your name at the moment. Donna, Diana went to work, and um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful to all of you and to Tolliver and um, Reverend Tolliver. And you have been a blessing listening to this. And I wanted to share to somebody because my aim is to help somebody overcome something that they are going through. Something that has been bothering their mind. Something that they want to talk about to somebody but they have nobody to listen to them. A topic that may, they have in their mind but has never been discussed. And I'm grateful to God to be able to do this program because a friend reached out and said, I have to do this today so that that friend can hear it, to share it with somebody. May God bless you all. And I'll keep you all in my prayers. Once again, thank you and God bless you. May the grace of God the peace of God, the love of God that is shed abroad for all of us be upon you all throughout your day, your night, and the rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen.